Orthopedic surgeon Dr. Mary Neal died and came back to life, experiencing a one-of-a-kind meeting with Jesus and a journey to heaven and back that has been featured worldwide on programs like The Dr. Oz Show, CNN, and Fox News. She joins us now to share her riveting story, her insights into the divine, and her involvement in the groundbreaking new film, After Death. Welcome to 100 Huntley Street, Dr. Neal. Oh, thank you very much. It's a privilege to be here. Well, it's our honor to have you joining us. Now, Dr. Neal, if you could take us back to that time in your life prior to this um, experience of dying and coming back to life, would you say that during that time you were a very spiritual person or very focused on the connection between science and spirituality? Well, I am a scientist. I still am. I was. <laughs> and I will tell you that I did grow up going to Sunday school, but, you know, I grew up in that era when really faith was more of a cultural experience. You went to church on Sunday morning and then went back to your life on Monday morning. Uh, and then I went off to college and medical school and did my surgical training. And I would say that, uh, oh, like so many people, faith was something that I would get to one of these days. It was sort of an abstract concept, but I was really busy. I mean, I had a full-time job, a husband, four little kids. You know, I mean, faith wasn't really something I I put at the forefront of my life. I certainly tried to be a woman of integrity and honest and ethical and all those things. But, you know, I, that's very different. I was someone who was very self-reliant and accomplished and smart and I certainly didn't need God. And I was just thinking about, you know, your experience in South America as you're kayaking and suddenly you need God and everything changes. Can you share a bit about everything. that story? Yes. Yes. I went over a waterfall at my kayak and was pinned or stuck under eight to 10 feet of water. And I didn't have any options. I mean, I was going to drown. And it would be very easy to assume that I reached out toward God only because I didn't have any options. And I don't know how to explain it, but I actually did still have an option. I had a choice to turn toward God or turn away. And that's always our choice. And I made a very, very active choice to ask that God's will be done in that circumstance, regardless of what it meant. And it was the first time, despite saying the Lord's Prayer, you know, I don't know, hundreds of times, thousands of times in my life, that it actually meant it. God, your will be done on earth, in my life, period. Not on my timetable, not the way I wanted it to be done. But truly, it was the first time very actively I gave up trying to control or be the one in charge of my life. And that started this incredible and wonderful adventure yeah. and an experience that I could never have imagined in my wildest imagination. I mean, I, like so many people, I'd never really thought about death, <laughs> actually. At that point in my life, I had had patients who had died. I had certainly been exposed to death. But at that point in my life, I had not personally known anyone who died. I didn't know a grandparent or a parent or a sibling or a friend who had died. And really, I had a great life. I hadn't really faced many struggles. Um, and I think that none of us really think about our faith. None of us have our faith challenged until we face struggle and especially when we face loss. Uh, Dr. Neal, as you were being held in the arms of Jesus, God showed you the truth of everything you just said by giving you this life review that allowed you to see painful things that had happened to you, but also to develop this understanding of an empathy and the ripple effect of how humans hurt one another. Tell us a little bit more about that life review you experienced. This life review was looking at the most wounding experiences of my life and being reimmersed in them from a, a point of understanding. I understood everything about me and my life story, my backstory that had brought me to that moment in time. And I also understood the backstory and life story of everyone else involved. And what I discovered is that it wasn't a matter of forgiveness. Because again, in, in our culture, we don't understand forgiveness. You know, it's always a two-part thing. Like, I forgive you, but 
I don't ever want to see you again, or I forgive you, but I'm never going to forget. <laughs> but God's forgiveness isn't that. It, it really is as far as the East is from the West. It's complete, it's absolute, and I think it comes out of the fact that God knows us, knows our story. And what I realized in knowing everyone's story in these wounding situations is that I didn't have to forgive. There, there just wasn't room for anger or bitterness or shame or any of those destructive emotions because where God's love is present, there's just no room. And so it was really uh, pretty remarkable because it's an experience that even though we may not think about it, it's an experience that every one of us has had many times in our life. We can look back and see many times where either we have been misjudged or we have misjudged other people. And what we realize is that when you understand the backstory, you don't have those destructive emotions. You have empathy, you have sympathy, you have some other form of love. And as God was giving you that perspective, being held in the arms of Jesus, having this life review, um, he wanted to give you even more perspective. And suddenly you were up above your body and you could see your, um, you know, your, your body there and your friends trying to resuscitate you. Um, and God began to bring you up into heaven. Would you share a bit more about that journey? It was awesome. <laughs> um, yes, my spirit, my essence, myself, the true me, whatever you want to call it, did leave my body and rise up and out of the water. And I have to tell you, I never had the experience of being alive and then dead or conscious and then unconscious. I had this experience of being alive and then more alive, mm -hmm. conscious and then more conscious. All of my senses were intensified a thousandfold. And it, it was different in terms of time and dimension so that I could experience all of eternity in each moment. I could experience, you know, it's like experiencing a thousand realities all at the same time, yet independently. And I know that doesn't make sense, but, you know, there's sort of no way really to describe it. And I was greeted by a group of, uh, you know, people, spirits, beings, people who had known me and loved me as long as I have existed. And people always ask, do I recognize them? And I did not, because again, at that point in my life, I had not personally known anyone who died. But I knew that these were people who had been important in my life story, perhaps a grandparent or great grandparent who died before I was born. And I knew they were so overjoyed, absolutely overjoyed to welcome me home. And yes, they took me along this incredibly beautiful path that to me was just exploding with color and flowers and the aromas of flowers, which is what speaks beauty to my soul. <laughs> I'm convinced that God presents to each of us when we die, the experience that will make us feel completely known, completely loved, and will speak beauty into our souls. And so they took me down this incredible path and toward this sort of great dome structure of sorts. And when we got to the end, I was there for what felt like many, many hours and had this incredible understanding of really the divine order of the universe, how it all works, how there can be billions of us on the planet, but we are each individually individually known and loved as though we're the only ones. <laughs> and then how it works, you know, in terms of interconnectedness. I mean, we are all part of one, mm -hmm. whether it's humans, animals, the natural world, we are God's creations and we are entirely and perfectly intertwined and interconnected. Well, and then I was kicked out. <laughs> I was going to ask and then, you uh, <laughs> yes, And then, you asked, well, right. You asked to stay and um, right. God said, I was told it time. wasn't my time. I had more work to do on earth and that I had to go back to my body. And when I objected, I, I was given uh, a laundry list of things I had yet to do. And many people ask, oh, well, it was a premonition or a thought. And I was like, no, I'm a very... Uh, concrete thinking person. 
And so it was basically a laundry list. It was like, okay, here's your list. So get back there and get to work. <laughs> and I might add that nothing on this list was something I felt excited to do. Nothing on this list felt like something I was qualified to do, had time to do, wanted to do, et cetera. Which makes sense, again, because the fact is none of us change or learn or grow when things are easy. I have to say, I mean, there were a lot of things I questioned on this list. Uh, certainly the most difficult uh, was being told about the coming and unexpected death of my oldest son, who at the time was a healthy nine-year-old. And there was no reason to think that he would would die young. And when I asked the obvious question about that, which is, you know, why, why him, why my son, I was immediately returned to my life review in which I had been shown again and again and again the truth in God's promise that there really is a plan for each one of our lives that's one of hope and the world, I might add. And that beauty really does come of all things. And I was reminded that it is always a matter of trust. And with that, then I was taken back to my body and reunited. Wow. And Dr. Neal, some years later, you did lose your son prematurely in a car accident. Yeah. And that he was mm -hmm. hit by a car and killed. Yes. Mm -hmm. And that experience... Wow. In heaven, did that give you strength during the loss of your son? Well, I would say that, uh, first of all, my experience with spiritual truth and my absolute trust of God's promises is the only way that I could wake up every day wondering if that was going to be the day. And it was 10 years later. So that's a lot of days to wake up wondering if that's the day. And I will fully acknowledge that my trust in God's promises did not protect me from loss. And it did not protect me from the emotional devastation of losing my son. He and I were very close. I loved him dearly. I would give anything to have him back. Like any parent, I'd give my own life for sure to have him back. Uh, but I will tell you that because of my trust in God's promises, even on my most sorrowful day, I simultaneously was able to experience incredible gratitude and joy. Because I think joy is found in the moment. And I think joy is experienced each day and each moment when you're able to consciously make this choice to trust God's promises. And Dr. Neal, I think there's truth to what you're saying, of course, like beauty can come from this great loss. And even now, I think as our viewers watching who may have lost a loved one and they're listening to you and they know you've experienced heaven, you can think how this could be ministering to them in this very moment that their loved ones are there Absolutely. waiting for them. Absolutely. And I will tell you, that's why I'm very happy to promote this film after death. Yes because it really goes through in a, uh, there's some testimonies in it, but it also presents data with regard to life after death. Mm. And I think it's really important for anyone before they face loss or, you know, afterward, but preferably before to really do the work of looking at the data presented, but then also feeling challenged to say, okay, let me try to prove all these people wrong. And I'm going to look at my own life because I don't really think God is present in my life. Because I feel like if, if anyone who's watching can do the work to get to the point where they can say, yes, there really is life after death. There really is an afterlife, a heaven, a spiritual world, a continuation of consciousness whatever they want to call it, if a person can accept just that one fact, then all of a sudden it forces a person to start to question, well, okay, what does that mean for life today? If there is a continuation of life, what am I doing here? What's the purpose of my being here? And it, it 
obligatorily sets them down this path of spiritual di discovery. Mm -hmm. And I think that path is ultimately, ultimately what leads to joy.